And let me tell you, brother, it's not a must that everything should be mentioned in the Quran. Even if it's mentioned in the Hadith, it's sufficient. I know there are some Muslims who say, no, we only follow Quran. This is totally wrong. Allah clearly mentioned in the Quran. Allah, wa Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So everything is not mentioned in the Quran. If you go to the Hadith, there are several Hadith which talk that you should prefer. It's empty number of Sayyid Hadith. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, salam alaikum, peace be upon you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I seek refuge with Allah against the accursed devil. Woman kawlan min man wa amila salihan wa kala innali min al muslimin. And who is better in speech than one who invites to God? That is Allah and acts righteous and says indeed i am of the muslims those are the submitters hazi sabili adu ila allah ala basiratin ana wa man ittabani wa subhanallahi wa ma ana min al mushrikin this is my way i invite to allah by perception i and whoever follows me in glory be to allah for i am not among the idolaters <clears throat> The truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Nobody is forced. You are on your own, I'm on my own. The truth matters, so you handle it the way you want. Oh, you who believe, beware of God. That is what matters, reference God. And be with those who are honest. Uh, Swadikin means those who are honest. So be honest people can tell you the truth and they are truthful. So be with those who are truthful. You can't be with those who are liars or phonies or traitors. You understand? Or you understand? You, you, you should try your best to be with people who can be honest with you and tell you the truth. Now, so today our topic has to do with the devious sectarian scholars. Actually, I've done this in the series and I've, I've done part one, part two, and I, I want to keep going as, as a series because it seems many a times people are more invested in the scholars, so-called scholars, as I would say, that they think only what these people say is the absolute truth. And that is the biggest problem in the modern day uh, Islam, you understand? So... To blindly base your faith on what a scholar who, who you don't know about his credentials. For instance, I give an example. If you're listening to scholars such as Zakir Naik, they will always, he will always use his verbal statement telling you, I'm a medical doctor, I'm a medical this, I'm a medic. But you never hear him say he is a scholar or a graduate in Islamic this or that. No. But when you have another person who comes out to awaken the people, the masses, and to enlighten them, then you hear people throwing in the questions. What is your qualifications? What is your degree? As if in Islam, you have to be issued with a degree. So I wonder if Prophet Muhammad had any degree or certificate by any institution to actually symbolize that he's a prophet or a messenger or somebody who is intellectually well endowed to enlighten the people of guidance you, you see the point what matters is the truth it's not about what qualification a particular person has in order to speak about islam so i don't know where this motive is coming from first of all the scholars you know mufti menk zakir naik uh, yasir kadi Numan ali they never came on the podium and stood there and carried their certificates to show you that hey i've been awarded in islam this this is to represent the people in order to teach you the truth in islam and by the way they don't teach you the truth so i'm going to play a sample of zakir naik's video which is a short video and i i hope those on clubhouse will get to hear it clearly because i'm not sure this is my first time i'm streaming live at the same time on clubhouse so I'm going to play this and listen to attentively to what Zakir Naik has to say. Any person, question and any answers. scholar, sister, says anything, ask for proof. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 111, Qul hatu bunanakum, produce your proof in kuntum sadiqin, but it was truthful. Any scholar, therefore what I say, that what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. No value. What Allah says, carry weight. So I, I hope you you clearly heard uh, what was said. Uh, uh, for, for for my listeners and uh, for my listeners, descendant listeners on on Clubhouse, actually, 
I'm, I'm streaming live via Facebook and Twitter. So I'm live on Facebook. Uh, I decided to, you know, record it at the same time on Clubhouse. So I might not be able to interact with people on Clubhouse as I'm here on Facebook. So pardon me on that. Because for the first time I, I had to get people on Clubhouse who have not heard from me for a while, get the chance to 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 hear me for, for some time because it's a while. So for those on Facebook and Twitter listening to me right now, uh, the video I just played was from Zakir Naik. And the notion behind what the reason why I pl I played this video from Zakir Naik was to to give credence to a certain information I was speaking earlier. Now, what Zakir Naik says is, any scholar says anything as for proof, right? Because what matters is what God says. It's not about what Zakir Naik says from his personal whims and desires. Or neither, neither does what ba ba Baba Shwaib has to say from his whims and desires has to be the ultimate goal. No. What matters is what God says is the truth. So carry on that. Forget about what Baba Shwaib, Zakir Naik, Numan Ali, uh, Mufti Meng thinks they know. Forget about that. They are humans like you. And to err is human, right? And this is why we need a source of information. Whenever, whenever people, for people who know me very well, whenever I interact with any intellectual person, uh, I try to push you to the limits to give us the proof or the source of your information or claims. That is what proves you have knowledgeable. But if you come and stand in front of me just because of a few degrees you earn, and you think you can just say your whims and desires and walk out scot free? No, it doesn't work that way. That's not how knowledge works. Knowledge is something, any factual information that you know that you can prove that ascertains that you had knowledgeable person. So Zakir Naik emphatically said that any scholar says anything as for proof, right? And God, God in his infinite wisdom, telling us, telling us. That when somebody makes a claim, that's like Zakir says in Quran chapter 2, verse 111, when the Jews and the Christians made a claim, what you need to ask is ask for proof, bring your proof. Let's check and see. It's as simple as that. If you have knowledge, what makes you think you have knowledge? The only way I can actually ascertain that you are knowledgeable is to tell me something I can cross check and see it for myself. That is knowledge. You see. So uh, this is why I try my best whenever I try to lecture people or educate people based on what I know. I make sure I give them the source of information for them to go and intellectually investigate for themselves so that it will not be a burden on me to think that, okay, Baba Schweib thinks it is blue or black. No, put me out of the equation. I'm just a deliverer of the message. So I deliver it. You, it depends on you to scrutinize it carefully and use your IQ to follow whether it is truth or not the truth that's up to you so that is why quran chapter 18 verse 29 says say the truth is from your lord so whoever wills let him believe and whoever wills let him disbelieve it's a choice you have to decide that not me decide for you so mine is just to enlighten you from the devious sectarian scholars that is my duty now so let's move on. So the, the, the main notion of me doing such a lecture concerning the devious sectarian score. Hey, sorry, by the, by the way, for people, I'm not reading your comments on Facebook. Because for those I couldn't respond, salam to you all. Thank you all for joining. And by the way, let's move on to the topic. Um, so the main notion of this uh, topic, today's topic, is to, to actually highlight what the devious sectarian scholars have to say, that people don't actually pay attention. And we are more uh, inclined to look at their positions and how they've been propagated to be like celebrities among us. And we think what they say is final. And just like the modern day world as we live in today, this is what celebrities have been propagated to become for us. What celebrities seem to say is final. So we all look up to them. We will look up to the you know celebrities we see around us and what they say, we think they are the most knowledgeable or enlightened people among us, and which is a wrong perspective. Uh, now, if I take you to Quran chapter 47, verse two to verse three, and I'm going to address a particular 
uh, instance from these verses, these two verses I'm quoting. And it all has to do with the truth which has been sent down to us from God. And why is this truth necessary for every believer out there? Now, there is a difference between saying you believe and being an actual believer. There's two different criteria for that. Quran chapter 2 verse 8. Among the people are those who say we believe in God in the last day, but according to God, they are not believers. So they are only saying it verbally, saying it while the action is mission. You see? So if you go to, for likewise for the Christians, maybe any by chance, if any Christian is listening, if you go to the book of James, uh, is it chapter 2, verse 20, and also chapter 2, uh, verse 26, it clearly states that faith without works is dead. If you have faith and you don't work on that faith, your faith is useless. And these are words of wisdom that I can I can take up to myself wherever I, I, I find it. It is just like uh, you being a Muslim and coming across an atheist who is in line telling you that killing a person is wrong. You have to agree with that atheist, regardless of the backgrounds you all come from. He might be an atheist and you are a Muslim, but whatever that atheist has said is the truth, because he is against people who kill people wrongly. So if you agree with such an atheist, doesn't make you wrong. You are only agreeing with the truth. So likewise, when it comes to the truth, when you are dealing with the truth, it doesn't matter which angle it is coming from, and it doesn't matter whose background you are taking it from. So far as your IQ tells you this is the truth, then you have to abide by it. Now, when you go to Quran chapter 47, verse 2 to verse 3, this is Surah Al-Muhammad. God says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَآمَنُوا بِمَا نُزِّلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ Then he says, وَهُوَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ كَفَّرَ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَأَصْلَهَ بَالَهُ now, the interesting uh, point in this verse I want people to pay attention is the truth. Now, what is the truth? So let's see what God says. And as for those who believe and do good deeds, that is righteous deeds, because I don't need to just tell people I'm a believer. I need to act on the righteous deeds that defines a believer. And believe in what was revealed to Muhammad. Now, what is that? Then God says, and which is the truth. Now, it is not talking about two things. It is only basing emphasis on a one thing, just a single thing. So the word in Arabic, a pronoun is was used, which is wahua. Hua denotes a single pronoun, which denotes it or he. If it's a masculine thing, it's he. If it is an object, you can say it. Uh, just like in Arabic, we only have a male and a masculine and a feminine uh, part of a pronoun. We don't have any third instance uh, unlike english where you can put it but we all understand that this is it because it's an object so which is the truth so god bases an emphasis on what he revealed to muhammad which is a singular thing not two things not three things not four things just one thing and he says it is the truth from their lord because it is not the only the lord of muhammad lord of everybody he will atone their bad deeds for them and improve their situation can improve the attention or the situation for them. Because whenever you notice the truth and you decide to follow the truth and be righteous, your, your situations get improved. Because it's just like being at a, at, a, at a lower standard in your life at a point of time, then all of a sudden you are enlightened and you become a better person as you go on. So your situations get improved. Now, when we continue to verse 3, before I base emphasis on the truth God is talking about, then God says, Zalika bi anna lazina kafaru. Then he says, What? A tabaul batila. Wa anna lazina amanu tabaul haq. You see? Min rabbihim kazalika yadarabullahu lil nas amthalahu. So God says, That is because those who disbelieve follow falsehood. Now, God is giving us a comparison here of two groups. Because in life, it's either you are with the truth. Or you are with the falsehood. You can be in balance in the in the middle. It doesn't work that way. Then you become a hypocrite. And hypocrite is more is the worst of all. So that is because those who disbelieve follow falsehood, and that those who believe follow the truth. So the disbelievers who always follow falsehood, and then those who believe follow the truth from their Lord. 
because that is what matters. You are not following the truth according to Baba Shrive, neither are you following the truth according to Zakir Naik, neither are you following the truth according to somebody's whims and desires. You are following the truth according to what God has revealed, so God's perspective. Then he says, does, does God cite to the people their example? So it is our examples, we the people. And we can see it clearly because when you give people example, they should be able to notice what you mean. And God is citing to us our example. So among us, we have people who follow the truth and who follow the falsehood. Now, the emphasis here is to base it that it was only one thing revealed to Muhammad and which is the truth, not two things. So you can never get the truth and say, oh, I can find some truth in the Hadith. That's pure garbage. Because what is there after the truth, if not error? So if you have the Quran as truth, am I waiting for the Hadith to confirm something from the Quran before I uphold it as truth? Hello, there's a problem here. So if the Quran is the truth, I don't need the Hadith to support the argument in the Quran before I validate whatever the Quran claims. I need to stick with the truth, which is from their Lord, our Lord. That is the Quran. The Hadith is not coming from God. They are coming from man-made conceptions, not from God. You understand? So there's a difference here. God claims the Quran comes from him. The Hadith never claims it comes from God. They are from man-made doctrines. You understand? So that is why people have been indoctrinated in Islam to think that only two sources of Islam we have is the Quran and Hadith, which is wrong. The Quran on its own is the original Hadith. Now, coming back to what uh, the scholars usually tell people is that uh, the, 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 original, the most authentic sources of Islam is the Quran, are the Quran and the Hadith. First of all, if you ask them, where does the prophet himself say this, said this, you know where to be found. Where did God, the authority himself said this, nowhere to be found. So then you start to see that you are following the whims and desires of the scholars. Whilst I played Zakir Naik's video a few minutes back, he says, any scholar says anything as per proof. Simple. Then he said, if any scholar says something, it stands on you, the person, to ask for proof. It doesn't matter what he, Zakir Naik, says. He says what he says in Islam is zero. But then we find people upholding what these so-called celebrity scholars keep saying as the ultimate truth, whilst ignoring what God says on the side. You see? So if I take you to Quran chapter 22, verse 54, I'm going to give you some interesting notion of the truth. We are still sticking to the truth. What matters is the truth and where we can find the truth, which is from God. So if I take you to Quran chapter 22, verse 54. Now, there's a notion of how the truth is being handed over to the people to believe. And if you are given the truth, it doesn't necessarily just mean that somebody gives you the truth. So you just believe blindly. That's not how the truth works, because truth should be factual. It should be proven. That is why it's called the truth. So truth cannot be based on that, like a premise where you assume to something to be true. You have to know it before you put your faith in it. You see, so there's a difference of saying, I believe this is the truth only. No, <laughs> you have to know this is the truth you're dealing with. Because if you have to deal with the truth and it is only about believing, then there's a problem. And this is why God gave us a scripture where we can investigate things. So Quran chapter 17, verse 36 says, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. You see, so in order to uphold something as the truth, it means you have investigated it and you know it is the truth. That is why you put your faith there. That's how the truth works. So when you go to Quran chapter 22, verse 54, God says, أُوتُ الْإِلْمَ أَنَّهُ الحق. He says, so that those who have been given the knowledge will know that it is the truth. So it is not only about believing the truth. You have to know that this is the truth. Based on what? Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So it, it means I have to pursue what I have, no knowledge, I have knowledge in. So which means I've investigated what I'm, I'm following. I've investigated what I'm basing my faith in. So it is not only about blind faith. Just like the Hadith concept they give us out there. The scholars want, just want you to believe the stories being uttered to you in Hadith without any questioning, without any reasoning. 
So you become an opposition to their logic. This is how it works. So then God says, so that those who have been given the knowledge will know that it is the truth from your Lord, and they will believe in it. Then he says, so they will believe in it. But they will only believe in it because they have acquired the knowledge of it. So now they will put the faith in it. You see how it works. It's not only about believing blindly. So then he says, well, So now what will their hearts do? Their hearts will humble to it. You see, so when your heart's humble to such a book, and you can see God is placing emphasis on the pronoun as to lahu. It's a masculine pronoun, which is it, an object, telling you the book, it, which is the Quran. It never said two things or three things here. Two things only. So they will humble to it. Then now God places the emphasis by saying, amanu ila Now, this is the excellent part I want us to see. Then God says, for indeed, God is the guide of those who have believed. No more about the unlettered, no more about the illiterates, no more about the Gentiles, no more about uneducated people. Because before you should become a believer, make sure you have investigated whatever you want to put your faith in. You are not supposed to be a blind follower. Just as Quran chapter 17 verse 36 says, do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So you can't just believe in something just because you believe Baba Shwaib is telling you the truth. No. Investigate for yourselves. That is why I put the proof out there. Check it for yourself. You want to believe, that's up to you. You want to disbelieve, that's up to you. Because on the day of judgment, I wouldn't be your advocate. <laughs> so if Prophet Muhammad himself couldn't be an advocate for anybody, <laughs> is it me who is lesser than the prophet who is going to be your advocate? No. Mine is just to deliver the truth which matters from God. That is it. You do your part. I do my part. We are done. So now God places the emphasis, says, for indeed God is the guide. He didn't say Muhammad was the guide. He didn't say Baba Shaib is the guide. He didn't say Zakir Naik is the guide. So for indeed God is the guide. The word Hadi is a noun. It means somebody who is a guide. You see? So God is the guide of those who have believed to a straight path. You see? To a straight path. So automatically, when you become a believer, not just verbally saying, I believe in God in the last day, that doesn't actually make you a believer. No, saying it is just bogus. So what you need to do is you work on your faith by actually implementing the knowledge you have acquired from whatever you believe in. Not a blind believer, no. You see, so then God becomes your guide because now you are there into his book because you have humbled to the book, the truth, one truth, which was revealed to Muhammad. One, not two, not three. One, which is a book, the Quran, we all know. <laughs> so I don't know how people can be silly and dumb enough to be deviated from this simple logic here God is telling you. But it seems most of the people don't investigate what they have been told. So God says in Quran chapter 6, verse 116, Wa intitu akthara man fil ardi if you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead you from the way of God. Do you know the reason? Because they only assume and they are only guessing. You see, they are only guessing. They assume because they cannot give you the truth. It's this God who will give you the truth. So that's why he told you when you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead you from the way of God. I hope this is clear and sound to everybody as it is to me. Now, I'm going to play Zakir Naik's video before I move on with the lecture. I'll, I'll be giving some uh, you know, relevant uh, hints or points as to help the masses on how to approach certain concepts which the scholars always present to us, right? Now, where I'm heading to is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got a feedback from, uh, I think, on Clubhouse that my voice is breaking up. Uh, well, I wish I could do something about it. But like I said, I'm, I'm streaming live on Facebook and streaming live on uh, Twitter as well. 
so I guess if people can join me on there, it should be uh, beneficial enough. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm taking you to a particular video of Zavid actually on what he said. He made an assertion, and I want us to just listen carefully for a few minutes. Uh, let me. I'll put it on a replay, and it's for a few minutes. So let's examine what he actually said from from that video, right? And let me tell you, brother, it's not a must that yes. everything should be mentioned in the Quran. Even if it's mentioned in the Hadith, it's sufficient. I know there are some Muslims who say, "No, we only follow Quran." This is totally wrong. Allah clearly mentioned in the Quran, "Atiullah wa ti Rasul." Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So everything is not mentioned in the Quran. If you go to the Hadith, there are several Hadith which talk that you should pay for it. Empty number of say Hadith. Husband Allah wa Nimal Wakil. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, I just I just played Zakir Naik's uh, video, right? Uh, which was about 25 seconds. And he said it is not a must that the Quran should mention everything for you. Right? And he says, some people say they want to follow the Quran alone, and he says they are wrong. And again, he says the, the Hadith mention everything. <laughs> So that the, the hadith is enough, that is sufficient. So which means, according to his understanding, the Quran is not sufficient, right? The hadith is sufficient for them. And he said, those who claim they want to follow the Quran alone, they are wrong. That is wrong. But these same hypocritical scholars are the ones upholding the so-called caliphate of Islam. They claim they are caliphs. I don't believe in that because Quran never mentioned anything about caliphs in the Quran about any Umar, Abu Bakr, uh, Usman, uh, whatever they have, Ali, Quran doesn't mention any of them. So they don't exist in the right, the correct Islam God has given us in the Quran. No, such thing, such concept is just a man-made concept, not coming from God. So you have to pay attention to that. Now, so the Islam, the correct Islam we have can be found in the Quran. That is the truth from God. It is only God who can tell you about Islam. Because Quran chapter 49, verse 16, God is asking a question. He says, Atu allimun Allah Are you the ones going to be teaching God your religion or about your religion? So your deen is your own what fabrications, concoction, whatever you have made for yourself. It is not coming from God. Whilst God's deen. In the Dida, in the Lail Islam, Quran chapter 3, verse 19, it has to do with God. So he has to tell you what entails in Islam. So anything you formulate for yourself, which is not part of Islam, is your own concoction. And you go to whoever invented that to you to pay you off. Now, the claims that Kirnaik made contradicts the first claim of his video I played, where he says, any scholar says anything, ask for proof. He says, when... Somebody says something, ask for proof. Tell the person to bring me a proof. What God says is final. That's what Zakir Naik said. So now we came back a few minutes later. Zakir Naik is sitting here making his own judgments and claims without even quoting a reference from God as to why following the Quran alone is wrong. And he quoted, Atiullah wa Atiwu Rasul means obey God and obey the messenger. And these same scholars don't seem to understand what the meaning of a messenger is. I, it baffles me. They don't know the meaning of a Rasul and they don't know the meaning of a Nabi. These are two different duties. So if God says obey God and obey the messenger, there is no way you can obey God without obeying the messenger. Because a messenger receives a message. So we can't talk to God direct, neither can we see him direct. Just as Moses did. You can't talk, get a conference with God directly, right? You get the point. So what happens is obey God. He, he must have sent a message to the messenger. When you obey that message, which has been given to the messenger, it means you are obeying the messenger. So automatically you are obeying God. So Quran chapter 4 verse 80 says, Man rasula faqad ata Allah. Whoever obeys God, uh, the messenger is obeying God. Simple logic. 
So God has given the messenger the Quran, and he clearly confirmed it in Quran chapter 47, verse 2, as I took you there earlier. If you believe it, what was revealed to Muhammad, Simple. So what was revealed to Muhammad is the truth, which is the Quran. That is one book given to him. What made Prophet Muhammad a prophet? The Quran. What made Prophet Muhammad a messenger? The Quran. You be a fool to think it is the hadith, the garbages the scholars have written for you are the ones which made the prophet or the messenger a messenger. Do you see this problem here? So this Zakir Raik just sat down and he said, if you claim you want to follow the Quran alone, it is wrong. Number one, let's prove him wrong by their own hadith, right? So now, there is this particular famous hadith they have, and it is Sahih al-Bukhari. You can find it in the Sahih al-Bukhari 5669. Uh, for those on Facebook, let, let me see. I can put it, let me put this on, uh, on, uh, on the screen. Then I write it down so that people can, can uh, later watch it on the video or uh, investigate for themselves later on. So let me let me let me see what I can do here. Uh, I open this up and put it on a notepad, or maybe let me put it on the word. So I I will lighten it up and put it for this on the screen but before that this particular hadith i'm going to put on the screen i'm going to quote for you has been narrated by ibrahim bin musa then he says by hashim from muammar and the hadith of abdullah bin muhammad narrated by what abdul razak informed by what muammar then it continues by telling you uh, the subsequent narrators, which is from Zuhri, from Ubaidullah bin Abdullah. Then now it goes from Ibn Abbas. So then narrated, who narrated this group of people I just mentioned, they are the ones who narrated this uh, funny thing I'm going to quote here. So it says, when God's messenger was on his deathbed, his deathbed, right? And in the house, there were some people among whom was Umar bin al akhtab So Umar was a, pa a part of this uh, group of people who were uh, at the Prophet's house. Now, according to this hadith, the hadith says the Prophet said, so meaning the Prophet what is, what was in, on his deathbed about to die. This is what the hadith claim, right? So the Prophet said, come let me write for you a writing after which you will not go astray. Then Umar said, the prophet is seriously ill and you have the Quran. The book of God is sufficient for us. This is what Umar says. And this hadith is Sahih al-Bukhari. The reference is Sahih al-Bukhari 5669. You can find it in the in-book reference, book number 75, hadith number 30. Three zero, right? This hadith is clearly telling you that when God's messenger was on his deathbed, so when we say deathbed, somebody who is about to die, in his house, there were some people among whom was Umar bin al akhtab So Umar was part of it, which is the so-called Khalifa. They keep claiming that Umar was part of the Khalifas, right? So the prophet said, come, come, let me write for you a writing, or we can say a, a letter or a book or something on a paper, after which you will not go astray. So meaning, even regardless with the Quran, people will still go astray, right? So then Umar said, the prophet is seriously ill, and you have the Quran, the book of God is sufficient for us. Now, this part I just read. In Arabic, he said, Haluma aktub lakum kitaban la tadillu badahu. Then he says, The Umar said, Fakala Umar, Inna nabiya kad galaba alayhil wajau. 
Then he says, Wa indakumul Quran hasbuna kitabullah. <laughs> yeah. So the Prophet said, Come or come forward. Let me write for you a writing after which you will not go astray. That's what he told the group there. So meaning the prophet can write, right? And the ignorant people are telling us the prophet couldn't read and write. <laughs> Umar said, so here, according to this Sahih Hadith, they are, they are telling us Umar was wiser than the prophet again. So Umar said, the prophet is seriously ill. And you have the Quran that is with you. The book of God is sufficient for us. Do you see what the hadith says? Hasbuna kitabullah. So if we have to tag somebody as following the Quran alone, who started this concept? We can clearly see in your Sahih Hadith, it was Umar. According to your Sahih Hadith, it was Umar. And now the Hadith doesn't just stop there. The Hadith says the people present in the house deferred and quarreled. They fought because of this statement. So Umar was overriding what the prophet said. Let's assume the prophet said this in truthfully. I don't believe in this garbage. But let's assume he said it. So Umar was now smarter than the prophet. After God says, obey God and obey the messenger. So that means if really this statement was coming from God and his messenger, Umar disobeyed the messenger. And you claim this is a Khalifa. <laughs> so then he told the people, the book of God, the Quran is enough for us. Hasbuna kitabullah. So if the Quran is enough, which means Umar bin al-Qtab claims that Quran is sufficient to follow, right? So now we have an Indian scholar, Zakir Naik, who now claims that for people who claim to follow the Quran alone, it's wrong. Yet we didn't see your prophet in this hadith rebuking Umar and telling Umar that you are wrong. But instead, what did the prophet do in the hadith? Let's check. So to complete the hadith, the people present in the house deferred and quarreled. Some said, go near so that the prophet may write for you a writing after which you will not go astray. While the others said, Umar said, when they caused a hue and cry before the prophet, God's messenger said, go away. He sacked them all. According to the hadith, I don't believe in this. But I'm telling whoever believes in this garbage. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Your scholars made it Sahih. And I'm going to show you the criteria they used to make Adis Sahih coming from your own scholars, one of them, Zakir Naik. I'll play the video soon. But now let's see contrary, uh, this Hadith, contrary to one of the verses of the Quran, which is found in Quran chapter 29, uh, Quran chapter 29, verse 51. So let me the verse, then people will see what God says concerning this particular issue. Uh, and also, let me so I can share that particular hadith on the screen here, yeah, and then I will maximize it. Uh, bear with me a bit. Yeah. Okay. So I increase the font a bit before I share it on the screen so that people can see it clearly yeah then i write the reference number for people also who can uh screenshot uh thank you very much lali Muntala. i appreciate that uh Mohammed Isaka, i'll be coming to the questions and answers please bear with me um yes yeah salam uh sayyid adam i see you harry emeka welcome yeah, let me just put the reference for the hadith and then people can maybe screenshot on that part and then uh, check it for themselves. So I shared a screen. Uh, let me see. Um, sh screen sharing. Yeah. So this is, I don't know if people can see it uh, clearly enough. For those who are on Clubhouse, I don't think you can see whatever I'm saying. Unless if you are streaming on Facebook, then you can see directly what I'm sharing. Uh, let me try to maximize it a bit. 
yeah so here this is the the hadith here right and this part this part i'm highlighting into the yellow text that is where umar said the prophet was is seriously ill and you have the quran the book of allah is sufficient for us right so this is the reference of the hadith here i'm going to uh put here let me see I put the reference of the hadith. Here I'm going to highlight it in a yellow text also. So the reference is of the hadith is Sahih al Bukhari 5669. In book reference, book number 75, hadith number 30. Uh, then it goes the English reference, volume 7, book number 70, hadith number 573, right? And this is the hadith on the screen. This is it, right? So the concept of Quran alone is not a modern day thing. It even started at the time of Umar. And remember, this happened at the deathbed of the Prophet. I don't believe in this garbage, this hadith. No, I don't believe in it. Uh, because this is a lie completely. It never happened. <laughs> it never happened. Yes, as a matter of fact, it never happened. And I can prove that. But if they claim this actually happened, for them to even classify it as Sahih al Bukhari, then this is the notion here. If you claim, we today who claim Quran is sufficient and we want to follow the book of God alone, and you are out of your foolishness, we, you think we are astray just because your celebrity scholars who are shallow-minded scholars think that following the Quran alone is a wrong thing. I'm taking you back to your own Sahih Bukhari hadith and see what your own Sahih al-Bukhari is telling you. That Umar, Umar bin al akhtar when the God's messenger was on his deathbed and in the house, there were some people among whom was Umar. Then the prophet said, come, let me write for you a writing after which you will not go astray. So according to them, even though the prophet already de delivered the Quran, he still thinks his people will go astray. You see? So now he is more smarter than the book of God. He has to write something aside the book of God, which can rather guide their people that they will not go astray. So, which means God will rather send people astray, right? <laughs> Umar said, the prophet is seriously ill. So Umar based this emphasis that the prophet is not okay. Your prophet, I don't think his mind is okay. That's what Umar said. So he is trying to tell the people, well, I don't think the prophet is okay. He's seriously ill. So forget him. And you have the Quran. So the book of God is sufficient. Do you see what Umar said in the Hadith? The people present in the house deferred and quarreled. Some said, go near so that the prophet may write for you a writing after which you will not go astray. While others said, as Umar said, when they caused a hue and cry before the prophet, then Allah's messenger said, go away. He sucked them away from him. You see, so according to your so-called Hadith, the first person, according to your hadith, to propagate the following of the Quran alone was even Umar bin Akhtab, who you claim is a, is a what? A Khalifa. He propagated following the Quran alone as sufficient. So if we now, this modern day, and we say the Quran is sufficient, and you have a problem with us, and you think it's a modern day thing, trying to tag us and give us names, Quranists, Quraniyun, or whatever, whatever, well, it's better to call me a Quran Yun than to call me Hadith Yun because I'll be a fool to be called Hadith Yun, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So you heard Zakir Nay clearly telling us in the video that for those who claim to follow the Quran alone, that is wrong. That is his own whims and desires. I don't buy that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lara Butala. Aha. So I'm taking you to Quran chapter 29, verse 51. That is Surah Al Ankabut. Now, what is the verse telling us, contrary to what they, they have in the Hadith books? What is the verse telling us, contrary to that? It says, أَوَلَمْ يَقْفِهِمْ أَنَّ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَرَحْمَةً وَذِكْرَى لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ Or is it not sufficient for them that we have revealed the book to you, being recited to them 
indeed there is mercy and remembrance in that for people who believe so like i said earlier believers are not only those who blind follow something they have they have knowledge and they humble to the knowledge they have and they follow the truth so that is why they believe so it is sufficient because when you have the knowledge of the quran you know this is sufficient for my guidance it is only a fool who thinks otherwise because quran chapter 6 verse 153 says wa anna haza sirati mustaqiman fattabi'uhu wa la tattabi'u subla fatafarraqa bikum an sabili and that this is my path which is free so follow it and do not follow ways meaning other ways then you will be separated from his way quran chapter 6 verse 153 that is clearly what god says so if you say the quran is not sufficient and that you need the hadith in order to practice islam uh, i think something is wrong the mind is kaput because which means you don't believe in god you are only part of those who god claims in quran chapter 2 verse 8 man you are not a believer you are only saying it that you believe and that is what the hypocritical uh, sectarians do most of the times now again so i take you to the next uh point here i'm going to place emphasis on when i take you to quran chapter 10 verse 32 we all know the quran is the truth so after the truth there is nothing else whatever you have after the quran is deviance it can never be the truth again you understand? Aha. Uh -huh. So now when you take Quran chapter 10, verse 32, the interesting part about this verse places emphasis around what God has to tell you and God himself. Because it tells you who God is and what God has to offer to you. Because God is the Al-Haq himself and he only has the Al-Haq to offer to you. That is God. So now he asks you, what is there after the truth? What else do you have after the truth? What do you have after the truth? If not error, except error. That's what you have. So if God is the one giving you the truth and you say that God, the truth of God is not sufficient, I need the hadith. Some garbage, somebody who has never met the prophet wrote for you years after your own scholars made it sahih. They are classified as Hassan. So he, the if, and you claim I need those garbages in order to practice Islam, then you are the dumbest fool ever existed in this universe. Wallahi lazim. Regardless of your position. Wallahi. Quran chapter 10, verse 32. God is clearly telling you in that verse. He says, So God says, and that is God. That is Allah, your Lord. The truth. He is the truth. So what is there after the truth? Except error. If not error. What is there? Again. So if God says, what he has revealed to Muhammad is the truth. Quran chapter 47 verse 2. Quran chapter 3 verse 60. Quran chapter 2, verse 147. Quran chapter 18, verse 29. He has given you the truth. Quran chapter 43, verse 78. The truth. And you say, no, Ahi, if you follow the Quran alone, you are astray. Wallahi, you are the biggest fool ever to exist in this universe. Wallahi. the book of god is here to give you guidance and god himself explains his own book quran chapter 11 verse 1 he explained it quran chapter 24 verse 18 he is the one clarifying the book quran chapter 16 verse 89 he is the one who has revealed the book as a clarification for all things quran chapter 17 verse 12 he tells you that everything he has explained in detail because everything he told you about, he explained in detail so that you can practice that dealing with it. Then you hear a fool telling you, tell me, okay, tell me where it explains how to do a salat. <laughs> <laughs> so
So just because the salat in the Quran differ from what your garbage books have taught you, you thought it's wrong, right? You see how shallow-minded people have become. Quran chapter 10, verse 32. And that is God, your Lord, the truth. So what is there after the truth, if not error? So how are you diverting? So if only error is after the truth, why will you divert to the, to the falsehood or to the error? Whilst you know the Quran is the truth, stick to it. Because Quran chapter 22, verse 54 clearly tells you that the God is the guide of those who believe to the straight path. So then why worry yourself? Somebody say, oh, if I follow the Quran alone, I don't understand everything. Must you understand everything before you practice? Because God, Quran chapter 39 verse 18 clearly tells you follow the best of what you, you, you have heard from the Quran. He says, Allazina yastami'una lakawla fayyatabi'una ahsanahu. When you listen to the word, follow the best of it. Quran chapter 39 verse 55, you are following the best of what God has revealed to you. Yes. So it doesn't necessarily mean you should get up and follow everything the Quran says. It doesn't work that way. That is why he says, do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So you don't have knowledge on, about something. Don't stress yourself. Don't try your best following what you don't understand or you don't know. Just leave it to be. There's another day. You study it and you get to understand it. Simple. Because that's how studies work. That's why people go for their academics. You don't just get every knowledge in a single, single day. It doesn't work that way. It's a gradual process. You just have to have patience for it. Just like Moses, Quran chapter 18, you start reading from verse 65 and read up to verse 82. He went seeking for knowledge, but he was looking for the knowledge in a haste and he couldn't acquire all of it. You don't get it in just a day. You just have patience for it. Some things will become clearer to you as time goes on. I wouldn't be sitting down here on the platform talking to the people if I haven't taken my knowledge day by day on a daily basis. I didn't just wake up in the blink of an eye and I think I know better than everybody. No, I speak based on my research. Then I tell you, don't believe me blindly. Go and investigate for yourself. If you think, oh, what Baba Shraib is saying is wrong, that's up to you. But what I say is, come, my platform is there. Phone me. We can arrange. Dialogue. Let's talk. Let's discuss it. Because what matters is the truth from God, not what the truth Baba Shraib thinks is the truth or Zakir Naik thinks is the truth. That's not what matters. What matters is, is it actually what God says? Fine. Then we move forward. Simple. So if God is the truth and after God we all agree there's nothing but error, so why waste my time with error garbage human book, books, uh, other books human uh, beings have written for themselves trying to claim this explains the words of God better? I don't buy into that. Yeah, let's move on. So now I take you to the next point here. The next point is in Quran chapter 45, verse 6 to verse 8. Now, this is this verse is very interesting as well. Surah al -Jatiya. Now, whenever you encounter somebody who is claiming that you don't believe in the hadith of the Prophet, just ask him a simple question. I want you to show me where the Prophet said he has given us hadith books to follow. As a matter of fact, no scholar on this earth can actually prove to you such a book. Where the prophet says, I've given you the hadith book. Here it is, Sahih al-Bukhari. The name of the book is called Sahih al-Bukhari. So follow it. Just as the Quran claims for itself, this is the Quran. Just as God says in Quran chapter 20, verse 2 to verse 3, We did not reveal the Quran to you in order to distress. Except to serve as a reminder for whoever fears. You see, clearly Quran speaking for itself. Bring me an hadith where the prophet claimed, this is my hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, or Sahih Muslim, or Jami al-Tirmidhi, or Abu Dawood, or Sunan ibn Nisa, that these are my collection of books, so follow it. Bring me that book. You don't have it. As a matter of fact, the classification of Sahih hadith, let me play a video from Zakir Naik, a short video. Look at how they classify Sahih hadith, and it's very ridiculous. I'm going to play the video. Listen carefully. There are basically five criteria for hadith to be say. Number one, the narrator should be of a good character. Number two, of good memory. Number three, there should be continuity in the chain of narrator. The sanat should be there. 
Number four, there should not be irregularities or flaws. Number five, it should not contradict any other sound hadith. If all the five criteria are met, it is called a Sai Hadith. If there is a slight flaw in any of these, then the Hadith become Hasan, but it is accepted. It is Makbul. There are basically five criteria for Hadith to be Sai. Number one, the narrator should be of a good character. Number two, of good memory. Number three, there should be continuity in the chain of narrator. The Sanat should be there. Number four, there should not be irregularities or flaws. Number five, it should not contradict any other sound hadith. If all the five criteria are met, it is called a Sai Hadith. If there is a slight flaw in any of these, then the hadith become Hasan, but it is accepted. It is Makbul. There are basically five criteria for a hadith to be Sai. Number one, the narrator should be of a good character. Number two, of good memory. Number three, there should be continuity in the chain of narrator. The Sanat should be there. Number four, there should not be irregularities or flaws. Number five, it should not contradict any other sound hadith. If all the five criteria are met, it is called a Sai Hadith. If there is a slight flaw in any of these, then the hadith become Hasan, but it is accepted. It is Makbul. There are basically five. <sighs> now, you, you just had Zakir Naik giving you the criteria of what makes an hadith, Sahih hadith. The person should be of good memory, good character, whatever, whatever jumbles he keep telling you. And then he told you this is how they classify it as Sahih hadith. Then he went ahead to say if there is some flaws Listen carefully. If there are some flaws, meaning some mistakes, in particular hadiths, in the chain of narrations, there are some flaws, then it is classified as Hassan. Hassan means good, right? Which means they will now classify it as Hassan. That is a claim. You see, they will now classify it as Hassan. If there are some flaws, they will now classify it as Hassan. That is what Zakir Naik said. Do you see? Then, what I want you to pay attention is, the criteria Zakir Naik gave you as to say, these are the five criteria of categorizing what? A Sahih Hadith. This is not coming from the Prophet. In which book did Prophet Muhammad explain to you the criteria of classifying a Sahih Hadith? You don't have it. What about those who classify hadith as the if? Do they have it? They don't have it. Who classified the hadith as Hassan? Your scholars. Who gave them that authority? It wasn't the Prophet. So which religion is this? So no wonder they call themselves Sunnis, Shias, Tijaniyas, Ahmadiyas, Muhammadiyas, uh, Qadiriyas, whatever, whatever, yeah, 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 yeah. Not coming from God. The Prophet has no idea what garbages they are forming for themselves. And more or less to talk about the books they claim the hadith of the prophet. You'd be a fool to think the prophet gave you another book aside the Quran. One lie. <laughs> now, the video I played, you had the criteria. Zakir Raik said. Now, somebody will say, why did you stick to Zakir Raik so much today? Yes, because the, it's a series I've been doing. It's called the Devious Sectarian Scholars. I started the first one I played, I think, Yasir Kadi. I did Yasir Kadi, Asim Al Hakim. I did Numan Ali Khan. I did a lot of uh, several scholars. So I keep doing the top top scholars, which I call the celebrity scholars, because people know them and they hold them in high esteem. So I'm taking up their own words against them. So what I'm doing is the Quran should always be our criterion. In Arabic, we say Furqan. So when we say Al Furqan, that is the Quran. So the Quran is the judge, is the criteria for us. In the deen. Remember, what God gives you is the best. But what a person gives you when it comes to deen, it needs to be scrutinized totally. Because if God has given me the chance to even scrutinize the Quran, Quran chapter 4, verse 82, then how much less your own book? <laughs> Do you see? If God has given us the potential to scrutinize his own book, to contemplate his own words, the Quran, do you think? I have to do less for a human being. For a human being, I have to do even more to investigate the lies a person can tell you.
So you should learn how to read people. Huh? You should learn how to read people. Because what the scholars are doing is they play with your mind. They manipulate the doctrines. So they try to indoctrinate you by making you believe blindly. So that you paste your blind faith on them, the scholars. So this is why Quran chapter 33 verse 67. On the day of judgment, the people will say, Kalu Rabbana, inna atana sadatana wa kubara ana fadaluna sabila. They will say, our Lord, we have obeyed our leaders and our masters, but they misled us from the way. Because you just obeyed blindly. You never investigated. You never cross-checked. You never asked for proof. You ask for proof, then you go and investigate. Believing is a choice. Quran chapter 18, verse 29. You either believe in it or disbelieve. Because on the day of judgment, you are on your own. But what do the sectarian religions do to you? They, they actually imprison your mind, so mentally enslave you to make you not to be able to think in a certain direction because the masses control the narrative. So when you are against the masses, they start tagging you as a mad person, like you're crazy. So what do you think? Are you saying you know better than Zakir Naik? This is what they could tell you. Are you saying you know better than our scholars? And meanwhile, that same person telling you that statement is the dumbest of all people. Yes. Because you never find any intellectual person questioning you in that sense. You always find the dumb ones questioning you in that sense. Are you smarter than Zakir Naik? As if he, the one asking you, is smarter than Zakir Naik for him to ask you that question. Anyways, I take you to Quran chapter 45, verse 6 to verse 8. And let's examine something interesting in, 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 in those verses. So pay attention clearly. Suratul Jatiya, God is asking, he says, he's telling the prophet, Tilika ayatul lahi natluha alayka bil haq. Then he says, Fabi ayya hadithi ba'da lahi wa ayatihi tiuminun. So God is saying these, the tilika, the, the verses we are reading now, these are the verses, the signs of God, which we recite. You can see they are being recited to somebody, and which is the prophet, alayka, second person pronoun. So alayka is a singular person. Right? Second person singular. So in truth, then God now asks the question. So in which hadith, in which discourse? When we say hadith is a discourse, the Quran itself is a discourse, which is coming from God, the best hadith. Because God knows people have formulated other hadiths out there. Quran chapter 39 verse 23. God tagged the Quran as the best hadith, the best discourse, or the best narration, you can say. So then he asked the prophet, so in which hadith? After God and his verses. He didn't say after God and Muhammad. He didn't say God after God and the Sunnah. He didn't say after God and Sahih al-Bukhari. After God and his verses. You'll be a fool to think the garbage books your scholars have written are the verses of God. So after God and his verses will they believe. Because remember. The main essence is to believe in God and his verses because God is the creator and he's telling you a message from his verses. So when you believe in the verses, you are having an interaction with God directly. So God and his verses, will they believe? So now it continues. You hear a hypo hypocritical hadith follower telling you, oh, this verse is not talking about the, the actual verses in the Quran. It's talking about the miracles in the sky and the... let's see your lies. Verse 7, athim. Woe to every sinful liar. God is saying, woe to every sinful liar. Afakin athim. Then God says in verse 8, Yesma yesmaha bi azaban alim. Who hears the verses of God? You hear them. Unless you are dumb and deaf who hears the verses of god being recited to him or her then insist arrogantly as if he had not heard them therefore announce to him of a painful punishment then the interesting part is verse 9 why is a alima min ayatina shay'an 
Kuzu one. Then they take it in mockery because, and when he learns something from our verses, he takes them in mockery. Those will have a humiliating punishment. That same person you are telling him the Quran says, he's mocking you, telling you you are a Quran yun. So his scholar says he shouldn't listen to you because whatever you are teaching doesn't come from the line of Imam Maliki, Hanbali, Shafi'i, Hanafi. So he has to mock you. So whatever he learns from whatever you are saying from the verses of God, he's mocking you. Then he takes it in mockery. Those will have a humiliating punishment. He hears the verses of God. He insists, he insists arrogantly on whatever he's doing. You are telling him clearly what God says concerning following the verses of God. He is telling you, no, Ahi, following the Quran alone is devious. Why will you follow the Quran? You'll be astray after God says, Zalik al kitab hudan lil muttaqin. Quran chapter 2, verse 2. That is the book, the way there is no doubt, as guidance for the pious. A foolish person is now telling you, when you follow this book of guidance of the pious, you are astray. How dumb can a person be? Quran chapter 45, verse 6 to verse 9. Clearly tells you based on the context that he's talking about the verses of God, not something else. Because the verses of God are the best hadith, Ahsan al hadith. So if you leave the best to go and follow garbages, what does that make you? Obviously, dumb. So we go to Quran chapter 68, verse 36 to verse 38. Then maybe I can allow some chance for the questions and answers. Quran chapter 68, verse 36 to 38. That is Surah to the Kalam. And let's see what God says in that verses, in those verses. For those who are upholding other books, saying these are other Islamic sources of faith, you are actually fooling yourselves. Because when God says in Quran chapter 61, verse 9, Who bil huda wa al haq? He mentioned the Deen al haq, the true religion, and then he mentioned the guidance. He never mentioned two guide forms of guidance. It was one form of guidance, which is the Quran. That is why I quoted chapter 2, verse 2. That is the book wherein there is no doubt as guidance for the pious. It was in Quran and Hadith, Hadith books. Quran chapter 68, verse 36 to verse 38. God is now asking us a question. He says, Malakum kaifatakumu. How do you judge? How? Do you judge by Sahih Bukhari because Zakir Naik is telling you you find everything there? So you believe in what he's saying after he himself telling you whatever he Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero, but you still uphold Zakir Naik because you think you deem that he's learned. <laughs> a, a medical doctor who is full of contradictions. Right? How do you judge? Verse 37, Am lakum kitabun fihi tadurusun, or do you have a book in which you study? So you study Hadith books. They give you thousands of Hadith books to go and follow before coming to follow Islam. Is that how shallow-minded people have become? When God is rather, rather giving you guidance herein, you leave it and study jumbos of garbages, the book they are giving you, telling you go and learn the science of Hadith, the science of rubbish. Or do you have a book Wherein you study, that is what God is asking. Do you have such a book? Then God went further and said, That you have there in whatever you choose or prefer. You have in that such a book. If you have, the simple assignment I give you is bring me your Hadith books, which explains Fatiha to Anas in full. Give me any Hadith books you have which explains chapter 1 of the Quran up to chapter 114. Wallahi lazim, I've stopped following Islam today, if you can give me such a book. I'm waiting for all the mushriks, if they are listening. Or just, be, okay, let me make the assignment easy for them. Let them bring me any hadith book which explains Surah Al-Baqarah in full from verse 1 up to verse 286. I'll stop following Islam today. They don't have it. Surah Al-Baqarah, in full, bring me your hadith, which explains Surah Al-Baqarah alone, 
the biggest chapter of the Quran in full. You don't have it. And yet you claim when somebody follows the Quran alone, he's astray. How dumb can you be? How foolish can you be? And you're walking around and people call you scholars. Yes. I'll be mean at you because you are actually mocking God. Yes. It's just like me sitting down and you're mocking my parents. You expect me to watch you lightly or to talk to you politely or to talk to you like I'm roman romancing your ego? No. I'd rather be upfront with you, strict with you, to make you see that you are very foolish. So Quran chapter 68, verse 36 to 38, clearly give us this credence here. How do you judge? So are you going to be judging by garbage books that Sahih Bukhari has to judge for you? Eh? He will see you and say, oh, look, look, he's wearing a necklace. Oh, he doesn't know necklace is haram. Come and open the Quran and show me where necklace is haram. Unless you go and bring the garbage books again and put in front of me and tell me, oh, according to one hadith, one time the prophet was sitting and one person came and he was wearing a necklace and then the prophet says, those who are wearing necklace will go to hell. That's it. Then they say, Allah, Akbar, this hadith is sahih. That's it. So that is your Islam. <laughs> you are a mushrik, as a matter of fact. That is not Islam. Hello? <laughs> uh -huh. So ladies and gentlemen, the point we are dealing here with, these people's same hadith books that they have written, according to Sahih Muslim 3004, the Prophet said in their own hadith, La taktubu anni wa man kataba anni gaira lo Quran fal yamohu wa hadithu anni. The Prophet told them in the Hadith, do not write anything from me except the Quran. So he says, whoever writes from me other than the Quran should wipe it out, should efface it and narrate from him. So narrating from him doesn't mean keep writing from him. This is how foolish some of them can be. They think when the Prophet says, Hadith Anni, it means write. <laughs> narrate from him means he just told you don't write anything from him except the Quran so narrate this thing he's telling you narrate it to the people that do not write anything from me except the Quran so this is why when he was about to die according to your same garbage hadith Sahih al-Bukhari 5669 he was telling the people bring a paper and a pen let me write for you something which you go not to go astray what did Umar said? the Umar said no we don't need it the book of God is sufficient, which is the Quran. That is what Umar said, according to your same garbage hadith, which I don't uphold such nonsense. Yes, the truth is better. A uh, bitter. I would rather tell you the bitter truth than to sugarcoat lies and give it to you. You see, ladies and gentlemen, let me open the phone lines. I still have a few minutes to drop. I'm going to read some of the comments, open online lines for those who want to ask their questions, then uh, I'll drop the topic for the day. So let me see. Uh, I wasn't reading comments. And for my listeners on uh, on Clubhouse, earlier on, they told me that the line there was cracking up. Uh, I, I can't uh, figure that out. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I'm streaming live on Twitter, Facebook, and then uh, clouds at the same time. So I can't actually decipher this issue for now, but I'll find a means around it to, to solve uh, this issue. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, I put, uh, let me put the number, the numbers there for people who have my number. If you want to contact me ask, to ask a question, two questions at a time, then I give you the chance to ask the questions, then we move on and bring the topic to an end. Uh, let me see if I can give my listeners the chance on Clubhouse also. Uh, 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 let me see. Okay. So that is that is the WhatsApp number down there on the page. That is the WhatsApp number down there on the page. Yeah. So when you contact me via WhatsApp, 
you can call via WhatsApp directly. Two questions at a time. And when you come online, or if you have any question, just type it if you cannot call. But you can type your questions, then I can come back to you and answer the questions, then we move on. Because I think I have some few minutes before I drop. Uh, yeah, so let me some of the ask. And, and as a matter of fact, as we... I'll be fixing up a time to do a lecture on uh, Malakat Aymani. When God Quran says Malakat Aymanikum, as people uh, try to say, oh, these are talking about slaves. Actually, no. Malakat Aymanikum has nothing to do with slavery. It's a different thing altogether. right? There's a difference between the slaves and there's a difference between saying Malakat Aymanikum. Those your right hands possesses, right? And those your right hand possesses are not your slaves. They are to be married as well. According to Quran chapter 4, verse 25, you have to marry them. There's no sexual copulation where you say these are your concubines or these are, no, no such thing. God doesn't, doesn't incite people to go and do obscenities as said in Quran chapter 7, verse 28, 29. So don't think you're part of the Islam the sectarians give you. The Islam you are part of is what the Quran gives you. That is the right Islam. Yeah. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I'm waiting for your questions. Then I move on. But for my viewers on, uh, for my listeners on uh, Clubhouse, I, I think earlier they told me that the 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 line was cracking up, so I couldn't actually decide for what was the the reason. Yeah, so let's see uh, what are some of the questions people are asking. Uh, yeah. And one, one funny thing about uh, sectarians. Okay, somebody is asking a question. Uh, Wasiu you, uh, Oyitunji is asking a question. Let me see. Oh, why is this uh, team interrupting with them? Oh, sorry, sorry about this. There's some some interruption on my page here, so I couldn't see the question the person was writing. I don't know what actually happened there. Yeah, let me let me go back to the question the person was asking. Somebody just ask a question. Is it oh, oh yeah, Tunji? But I think uh, I click on something here. It got stuck. Uh, yeah. What's your Yatunji? Yeah, don't Salam. I'm good, bro. The Bible says now good is Salam. He says, does the Quran 14, chapter 14, verse 4, contradict chapter 21, verse 107? Can you please explain the verses? Uh, no, they don't contradict each other. Quran chapter 14, verse 4. God says, Wamar Sana Mir Rasuli illa bilisan in kaumihi liyubajinu lahum. So God does not send a messenger except in the language of his people in order to clarify for them. Then again, when you go to Quran chapter 21, verse 107, God says, Those objectives are two different objectives here. Talking about, we do not send a messenger except in the language of his people in order to clarify for them. So meaning in the language, he breaks down things in their language for them. It's different from breaking down the Quran itself. The Quran is there itself has been broken down by God, as said in Quran chapter 24, verse 18. But in Quran chapter 21, verse 107, God says, He did not send the messenger. We did not send you except as a mercy for mankind uh, or the, the, the all people. So, this mercy, we have the Quran because what happens to the Quran is we find mercy in it. Quran chapter 28, 
verse 85 to verse 87. There is mercy in the Quran. There is a healing in the Quran. So what happens is this messenger was sent with the Quran and now we all have it in the whole world. But then every nation will have a messenger who will come to clarify for them in their own language. That is a notion there. You understand? So Quran chapter 14 verse 4 has no contradiction whatsoever to do with 21 verse 107. The objectives are two different things, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So now, the next question asked by uh, Robert Jones, right? Let me put it on the screen. Yes. And for my listeners on Clubhouse also, kindly do me a favor. If you have a question and if you can listen to me sound and clearly, you can type your questions at the back channel and I will answer that as well right uh -huh. so the next question is was asked by who Robert Jones uh let me see if I can put it on the screen I think there's something wrong with that he says is it compulsory for every Muslim who had ever performed Hajj to continue doing layer every year or is enough with the one that you have done of the previous Hajj well, this, this person is talking about animal sacrifice, right? Is he, he's saying, is it compulsory for every Muslim who had ever performed Hajj? First of all, the Hajj is a different thing altogether with the sacrifice, the Hadiyah. They are two different things. However, every year, the Hadiyah is the main goal. Hajj is not the main goal. Quran chapter 3, verse 97, God says, وَلِلَّهِ الْعَلَى النَّاسِ هِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلَ as for going for the Hajj, it is for whoever is capable of the means to it. If you are capable of going, God says, Hijjul Bait. He didn't say Hijaj. He didn't say go to multiple Hajj. If you want to go to multiple Hajj, that's up to you. So going for Hajj is just a, 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 a voluntary thing that God actually told people to do. Walillahi ala nas Hijjul Bait. Man is tata ilay sabila. For whoever is capable capable of the means to eat. It is not compulsory. Then when we come to the hadiyah, that is the animal sacrifice, it is clearly stated in Quran chapter 2 verse 196 and clearly stated in Quran chapter 22 verse 34 to verse 36 that you are doing it for piousness, the piety of what God has commanded you. So every year during the uh, Ashurul Hurum, yeah, the sacred months, it, you can do the animal sacrifice. If you can't, then you do the what? The uh, abstinence, the fasting. That is, if you cannot do the animal sacrifice, you can do the fasting. But it has no connection whatsoever that the Hajj is the basis of why you do the animal sacrifice. No, no connection whatsoever. So I hope that clarifies the point. And if you get to watch my full lecture on the Hajj, I have the Hajj, the pilgrimage is not a debate, and I have uh the, the other one on my youtube channel if you go to the hatch series folder you find uh this relative to the topic uh let me see some of the next questions being asked uh exactly silence if they don't want to wake up <laughs> to the truth then it's their own cup of the uh Wasiu says, can one enter paradise without observing Ramadan fasting, according to the Quran? Uh, Ramadan is a month in which the Quran was revealed. Now, the abstinence we, we practice is only in the instance of taqwa. Because what says in Quran chapter 2, verse 183, he says, Ya you are Lazina Amanu, Kitu Kutiba Aleikum Siam, Kema Kutiba Alla Lazina Min Kabalikum, La Alla Kunta Taku. So the purpose of the Siam is to get you to be pious because you are following the commands of God, right? So you are doing as He asks you to do. That is what gives you the piousness. Just like the animal slaughtering, we do it for piousness. You show your piety to God. He is not in, interested in the blood or the meat of the animal, but interested in your piousness. Do you understand? That's why he gave you the objective of what to do. Uh -huh. So when it comes to the Ramadan fasting, when somebody doesn't fast, this is why we have people who are sick. They cannot do the fasting. 
We have people who are traveling. They cannot observe the fasting. Are they going to hell? The answer is no, because it is not mandatory. It is voluntary for the believers. And a believer who requires to be pious will actually observe it. Somebody who cannot do it, why will you force him? That is why God made a fidyat to amin miskin, a ransom of feeding a poor person if you cannot do the fasting. You understand? So it is not a thing. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Muhammad Gaddafi. I appreciate that. Uh, Nara Power is saying, Quran said, do some, but can we use that blood to do something without eating? Uh, it is only the consuming of blood, which is haram. Nara Power. Dima'a. When we say Dima'a, that is blood. Consuming of blood, Quran chapter 6, verse 145, to consume blood is haram. But any other thing you want to use blood for, that's up to you. Quran never said that is haram. So far as it doesn't involve shirk. You understand? Uh -huh. So any other thing you want to use blood to do, that's up to you. If it doesn't involve shirk. Muhammad Hussein says, Dear sir, is humanity the best religion as some scholars claimed based on 1770 is humanity the best religion as some scholars claim he says based on 1770 well let's see let me let me be sure of what you're asking first then i can answer surah al israel chapter 17 Verse 7, 70. Right? Uh -huh. So based on the question the brother is asking. Yeah. Based on the question the brother is asking, let me see if I can break that point down. Moses, John, I'll be coming to your question. Let me finish with this brother's question. I'm, I'm looking up uh, something he said just to be sure of the point he made. Yeah. So Quran chapter 17, verse 70. And it says, And we have certainly honored the children of Adam and carried them on the land and the sea and provided them with good things and favored them over much of those we have created in preference. Children of Adam, those are the human beings God is talking about here. So God says, we have certainly honored the children of Adam and carried them on the land and the sea and provided them with good things and favored them over much of those <clears throat> we have created in preference. This verse, the emphasis of this verse is just to give credence to the human being as to telling us that God has preferred, preferred us over most of what he has created. But I don't see the notion of the best religion here. Because when we are talking about the best religion God has given you, that is the Islam, the submission you submit to God. That is what the religion is about. And like I said, religion can have multiple meanings. But the main meaning of religion in line with the Quran is believing in a supernatural being who controls your destiny. Right? Because first of all, you didn't choose to be born in the country you were born. This same God chose where you should be born. You didn't choose to be black or white or green or blue. He, the same God, chose it. You don't choose the land you have to die. God is the one who has to choose where you die. You don't choose to be sick. He chooses whether you are sick or not. You understand? So he is the, he is the God who controls your destiny. Right? Uh -huh. But even though he has given you the free will, then there are certain things that you are not in control of. So that is the religion in God. So you submit to this maker because he is in charge of you. Submit to his will and do as he asks you to do. That is the best religion. So Quran chapter 4 verse 125. This is what God says as to why I said that submitting to God is the best religion. As we see the example of uh, uh, Abraham, alayhi salam, prophet Abraham. So God says in Quran chapter 4 verse 125. Woman ahsanu dinan. Khalila. And who is better in religion than one who submits his aim to God, his attention to God, 
while being benevolent, a good doer, and follows the creed of Abraham orthodoxly. For God took Abraham as a friend. So here, submitting to God as just the example that Abraham set in the Quran, that is the best way to be in the best religion. And remember, God wants us to be good to each other. Quran chapter 60, verse 8 to verse 9, clearly tells you how to live with people in harmony. They don't hate you, don't hate them. They don't hate you because of religion, don't hate them. They don't evict you from your houses, don't hate them. Be equitable and justice with everybody. So that is humanity. So in one way or the other, what you said might be in the line, but yes, that is the point. Moses John is asking a question. Moses John says, where are the Injil? Huh? Where are the original Injil, Taurat and Zabur? Quran came to confirm. Where are the original Injil, Taurat and Zabur? Quran came to confirm. That's a good question. Now, Injil, we all know they are the good news of what was given to Isa, alayhi salam. And then we know the Torah was given to the prophets. So for people who don't know, the prophet of children of Israel, all of them had the, what we call the Torah. Quran chapter 5, verse 44, right? All the prophets who submitted among the, submitted among the children of Israel, they had the Torah, including Jesus himself. Quran chapter 5, verse 48, he was given the Injil and the Torah as well. And the Christians themselves confirm it in their own books. I think in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, he said he did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill, right? Uh -huh. So the instance of where is the Injil, the Torah, the Quran is coming to confirm something which has been hidden, which has been concealed. You understand? Because God says in Quran chapter 3, verse 71, he's talking to the people of the book. Why do you conceal the truth with falsehood? While concealing the truth knowingly, while you know. So the truth has been concealed. So what the Quran came to do is to bayina, to bring out the truth which has been hidden. So the Torah and the Injil that people are claiming today are not the original copies. They have been hidden. It's just like me having a fake passport whilst hiding the original passport. That is an example I'm giving you. I might choose to have a fake passport whilst hiding the original passport. So when I bring you the fake, you can detect it's fake. But of course, if I detect it's fake, I, don't, I cannot know where you kept the original. You have hidden it somewhere. You understand? Uh -huh. So that is the notion. So if you ask me, where are the original Injil, Torah, and the Zabur? I should be asking you, the Christians, and the Jews, and whatsoever, to either provide us with the original one. Because what you claim is the original, we don't seem it to be original. That is your answer. That. Is drinking alcohol can take to hell? No. Drinking alcohol doesn't take you to hell. Nowhere did God, God say that. <laughs> there is a video of a Saudi scholar, uh, Asim Al Hakim. He said he drinks beer. He said two to three percent, <laughs> and he says when he drinks, nothing happens. So if he's going to hell, he's number one <laughs> from Saudi Arabia. Another power says I'm I'm still waiting for your hard copy, the Great Quran from Ghana. I'm working on it, Inshallah. I'm working on it. Have patient, have patient. I appreciate the support, and I'll work on on it so that people can get it in time. Uh, my time is getting squeezed up. Um, I've already done one hour, 45 minutes. Uh, still dealing with questions being asked. And uh, let me see. What are some of the last questions I can answer before I go? Yes. Any more last question before I go? Last question before I go, or say maybe somebody ask question prior to doesn't pay attention. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Frankie Pani. Yes, for those who ask questions earlier that I couldn't see. Uh, Muhammad Isaka says, please, Baba, what makes ablution invalid? It is mentioned in Quran chapter 5, verse 6, and Quran chapter 4, verse 43. What makes ablution invalid? You find it there. 
right? Uh -huh. What God asks you to do before establishing the salat, if you don't find that fall in that criteria, then it invalidates your ablution. So you have to do it again. So that is what uh, it says there, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, some of the last things before I go, I don't want to exactly reach two hours. I want my lectures to be uh, this time two hours so that uh, it can be beneficial for people to watch, right? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Abdul Jalil, they never have power to do. They just have power to say we will kill you. Uh, Fatima Mohammed says, what are your thoughts on fasting being every month? Uh, I've, I've not come across such a knowledge in the Quran, fasting being every month. No, I don't, I don't see that anywhere in the Quran. Uh, Prince Prince Wade is asking a question. He says, is drinking alcohol haram? Right? He's asking a question. He says, drinking alcohol haram. Uh, Quran chapter 6, verse 145. God, God clearly says to the messenger to say that he does not find in what he has been inspired anything that you consume that goes to your mouth as haram, except be it blood, the meat of pig, and then what? Dead animal. Those things are haram, completely, straightforward. But as for, to say drinking alcohol, I wouldn't advise anybody to become a drinker of alcohol. But however, we have certain things you do for the benefits. Quran chapter 2, verse 219. Yes, God says, when they ask you about wine and gambling, say, in both of them, there is a great sin and then benefit for mankind. So when you are doing things for the benefit of something, we can classify that as, as haram. Because remember, in Quran chapter 47 verse 15, yes, Quran chapter 47 verse 15, if I'm sure, let, let me confirm. When you go to the paradise also, you'll be drinking wine as well. So if it is haram here, it should, be, it should be haram there as well. Now, there's a reason why God says you should avoid it. Whenever it comes from the Amalek shaitan, from the hand, handwork of the devil, that is when you have to avoid it. So there's a difference between eating chicken from a house of disbelievers and eating chicken in the house of believers. The same chicken that you go to eat from some uh, a disbeliever's house or a mushrik's house, he has dedicated it to his own deity, which is haram for you. But that same chicken, when a Muslim slaughters that, it's halal for you to eat. So when God says, you you should avoid the Amali shaitan. When a drink has been made in the form of the handwork of the devil, then you have to avoid it. But in entirely, I won't tell you alcohol is haram because it never says it is haram directly in the Quran. As I quoted chapter 6, verse 145, right? Uh, again. Based on the question, and is it okay for a Muslim to marry a Christian? It depends. If the Christian is not an idol worshiper, then it is allowed. Quran chapter 5, verse 5. It is allowed for us to marry the people of the book, right? So far as they are not mushriks, we can marry them. As also said in chapter 2, verse 221, right? Yeah, more questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I will just take one more question that I'm done, please. Uh, somebody say, is asking people in the grave in the Quran, asking, you mean questioning in the in the grave, to claim people as the Hadith people are claiming. No, it doesn't exist, right? Uh -huh, it doesn't exist. That asking the way the Hadith people says, it doesn't exist. But the notion of what the soul will after you die, Yes, you find it in Surah Al-Takathur. Al-Aqum Al-Takathur. Right? At-Tazurdum Al-Makabur. Kalla Sawfata Alamun. Thumma Kalla Sawfata Alamun. 
kalla law ta'lamuna ilman yakin la tarunna aljayin thumma la tarunna ayna aljayin thumma la tus'alunna yawmaizin anin na'in right aha uh-huh. so in that sense yes the quran speak in that fashion but in the fashion of the way the mushriks tell you you be asked ma rabbuka ma dinika ma kitabaka man nabiyuka these are all garbage not coming from god what is your opinion on billions of people not practicing islam are they all going to hell that is the decision of god quran chapter 6 verse 116 if you obey most of those on earth they will mislead you from the way of god they are only assuming and they are only guessing right so yours is just a follow of uh, god according to the christians many were called but only few were chosen so you have to abide with the few as best as possible by using your intellect most people doesn't carry any weight ladies and gentlemen this is where i bring the topic to an end i'm getting exhausted my time is up 2 hours is enough Uh, inshallah next week i will organize a program where i'll talk about the slaves and then the malakat aymanikum so that you understand it has nothing to do with the slavery but instead it is talking about those your right hand possess in a legal means not in a slavery means so ladies and gentlemen thank you for the time and effort as you see this is my whatsapp number on the page scrolling down there and for people who have not subscribed to my youtube channel kindly subscribe to get some beneficial knowledge where you can study for yourself daily basis right aha uh-huh. so that is my whatsapp number down there you can save it page me when i have anyone ever have time i answer the questions which are sent there but please please i'm not on there regularly to answer questions so sometimes when i'm free that's when i answer questions so if you send me a question and i don't answer it doesn't mean uh, i'm ignoring you because i have a lot of people on the queue usually that i answer sometimes i wake up answer about 30 questions from people yes and i'm all doing this for the sake of god i don't ask anybody to pay me right so ladies and gentlemen this is where i bring the topic to an end and to my listeners on clubhouse this is where i bring it to an end i appreciate your support thank you very much as well and to my listeners as well as uh, facebook and twitter i appreciate the time and the support and this is where i should bring the topic to an end and inshallah next week we get to meet again uh for a purposeful uh discussion so this is where i bring the topic to an end thank you and let me tell you brother it's not a must that everything should be mentioned in the quran even if it's mentioned in the hadith it's sufficient i know there are some muslims who say no we only follow quran this is totally wrong allah clearly mentioned in the quran atiullah wa ati rasul obey allah and obey the messenger so everything is not mentioned in the quran if you go to the hadith there are several hadith which talk that you should prefer an empty number of say hadith 